Hey YouTube, so you've adopted your child and now you want to change their social security number. What do you do? Let's find out. One, two, three. Let's go. Okay, so you have adopted your child and for various reasons, you may want to change their social security number. Why? Well, it could be that you're afraid that a biological family might claim the child on taxes. It could be that you're afraid that someone will steal their identity that's somehow aware of those, their social security number with their biological family. It could be that you have other reasons to change their social security number. You're afraid maybe there's some criminal element in their family and don't want them to easily trace the child. Whatever the reason may be, you've come to the decision that their social security number needs to change. How do you do that? All right. That's what this video is about, fortunately for you. Now, I have to preface this by saying that, let me say it's it's different at many social security offices because the head honchos make different decisions and that affects this. Also, I went through this process several years ago. Uh, I did verify that a lot of this has not changed, but some things may have changed. Also, I went through this process in one location in the US. And so in your location, it may be different. Good luck. Unfortunately, you're dealing with a very interesting government bureaucracy as you approach this. But here's what you should do. I'm going to be, I'll be looking at notes, by the way, throughout this video. So uh, I'll be looking down because this is complicated and I don't want to mess things up. So technically, if a child knows that they're adopted, the Social Security office will not want to change their number. How do they determine if a child knows they're adopted? Well, they make a blanket decision based on the child's age, typically. And so typically this means that if the child is over the age of five, they will not change their social security number, at least not very easily. So over the age of five. Now I'm saying that and know that I changed my child's social security number after he was adopted uh, when he was somewhere around age 10. I actually waited a little bit before I did it, but I think it was about age 10 when I changed his number. So it is possible, we'll talk about how you do it. I had a letter from my social worker that said that the child needed his social security number changed, that my child needed his number changed for his safety and because there was a high likelihood of his identity being stolen. So those were the things the social worker wrote in her letter and she said that she recommended that his number be changed. That letter was submitted to the Regional Office of Social Security and then it was approved. This was three or four years ago that we did this. That's that's how they worked it then. I did verify that that's how at least one agency still does it. So they submit it to the Regional Office. The Regional Office read through the letter and then approved that the child could have their social security number changed. Next, you need to fill out form SS5. Yay, SS5. And with that, you need to mail in an actual copy of the adoption decree from the county. And this adoption decree should have a seal on it, like a state seal that is colored, right? It should not be a copy. It needs to have a colored state seal on it. It must have the name changes and the new adoptive parent names listed. The other thing you mail with this is if the child's name is changed, you need to have the updated birth certificate cannot be a copy. This is the one you receive. Then you must mail in actual IDs for the adult and the child. Actual IDs. These are not copies. So think about on that list of things they send you, what you can live without for about five days or so, five to 10 days. If you and the child you're adopting have passports right now, because I'm filming this during the whole COVID thing, passports are a great option because not many people are traveling. You can live without these typically for 10 days. Passports are a good idea. That way you don't have to mail your driver's license in. You can also use in most offices. Now this may not be true in all offices, so you may want to check. In most offices, you can use last year's student ID for the child. Okay, again, this is in most offices, and they're assuming that students didn't get a student ID this year because of COVID. If, the, if you're watching this video and COVID's over, oh, let's just hope you are. <laughs> but then, then it does probably need to be this year's student ID or the most recent student ID that gets sent in. Uh, again, it'll be about 10 days until you get this back, so you might want to wait if there's some kind of special event at school that requires a student ID before mailing it in. 
Okay, let's be honest. They made me do this in addition to the other things because they didn't know how to process a single man's adoption. But they had me, in addition to mailing in those other IDs, they had me go to the doctor's office and on a letterhead from the doctor that includes my included my name, birthday, and says that I'm a patient, included my patient ID and had a wet signature on it. In other words, done in pen, it cannot be a copy. Uh, and then stamped with the time and date of when it was. Yay, all, all of the craziness you have to go through. That counted as an additional ID for me. They, they wanted basically everything from me. That's again the office I was going through and because I was a single man and he didn't have a system in place for single men or maybe there was some bias going on there, I'm not sure. But I had to do everything. So passport, driver's license, then the doctor's office note. That's very unusual. Most places will not have you do all of those. Again, it, it just depends on the location where you're going. I have another video that talks about that whole thing and why I went through more with this than other people do. Those must be sent in and they should, all of these things should be mailed back to you within 10 days. Yeah. All right, good luck. This is not easy. I, I wanna warn you, when I went to the social security office with all of this stuff, they sent me on about five errands that included like going to the school and getting a stamped letter from the school saying that this child went to that school and that I was that child's dad. I, I don't know. They just sent me on all these different errands. They might to you as well. Be prepared for that. They did, when I came back into the social security office, they did let me skip ahead in the line. I just went up to the security guard and said, hey, dude told me to to just let you know and you would move me forward in the line to talk to him. And so each time I came back, I did get to go straight pretty much to the window. And that was helpful because otherwise it would have been even more insane. Thank you for listening. I really hope this is helpful. I know this is not the most exciting vid. This video is not made for everyone. So we're not trying to gain a bunch of viewers from this or whatever. I just hope to be as helpful as I can and hope this information does something to help you figure out how to navigate getting your child a social security number. Again, it's a lot easier if they're under five, five or older than five, and typically offices are gonna give you a harder time about changing their social security number. You'll need at least one letter from a social worker in order to do that. Some, some kind of evidence that their life is in danger or that their identity will probably be stolen. But the identity thing probably won't work alone. I'm telling you right now, if uh, the social worker just says, yeah, their identity is probably going to be stolen. That It depends on the office, but that may not be enough evidence to let them change an older child's social security number. Good luck. Thanks for listening.